Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. This week, got a little bonus video for you all. We're going to be painting some, well, the first video from Games Workshop Warhammer 40k. This is some Astra Militarum Cadian, Canadian Cadian Infantry Squad. Benson's painting that this week. That's his favourite game in the whole world. So let's see how he does. And I hope you enjoy painting something a little different on the channel. So he started off by showing you the, the model. He's got no arms. These guys are weak. I mean, I don't know how they're going to win any battles, but he did show you just before I mentioned that that they were, the arms were on the sprue, and he advises painting those on the sprue instead of attaching them to the model. They'll be easier to paint unattached and then attach at a later date. He's going to be first using Steel Legion Drab, and he's using his base brush by Citadel as well. He's going to use everything in this video by Citadel, with the exception of his, his favourite army painter brush, which I'll show you when he gets there. So we're just coming to the end of Steel Legion Drab there, and that was for painting his jacket, trousers, and he'll, Benson will also be doing the arms on this sprue that was shown at the beginning of the video. So paint the, the jacket arms with that. This is a Baden Black. This is by Citadel as well, and this is for the soldier's boots, and you just saw Agnes peeking in there, and she's going to come for a quick mid-video inspection. She's pretty happy with that, so we'll carry on. We're going to be using Castellan Green by the Citadel. As I said, everything's by the Citadel, but I'll probably keep saying that because I'm just used to telling you who has manufactured the paint that's on the screen. So the green is for his bulletproof vest. Looks like a solid bulletproof vest to me. His bulletproof helmet and his bulletproof ankle guards. So for the next bit, we're going to move on to the only bit that's not Citadel in this video, and this is um, just Benson's detail brush. This is a Army Painter Kalinsky Masterclass. So I asked Benson why he owned, why, why he cheated on Citadel and why he owned something that isn't made by them, and it was purely because this brush said Master on it, and he thought it would make him better at painting. So that was just abandoned black back there, and that was just painting on the chin strap. Next is Lead, lead Belcher. It's just a silver, it's a Citadel silver, and that was the paint on a few of the, the soldiers' badges and emblems. And he's also finally showing you what he's been doing on the sprue. He's forgot till now, so apologies for that. But as you can see, he's painted on the metal of the gun, so that's the dagger blade, whatever you call that on the front. Bayonet, boom, I am on fire with words. Uh, the ammo clip, the nozzle of the gun, nozzle's a good word. Um, I'm sure that's what it's definitely called, nobody correct me on that one. After painting the metal, he's on to Cadian Flesh Tone. This is the skin that belongs to these soldiers. It matches them 100%. And that's for their faces and their hands. They should wear armoured gloves. Why have they got armoured anklets but not armoured gloves? If you lost a finger, you'd struggle fighting more than an ankle, maybe. I don't know. I won't put that to the test ever. So that's just painting their fingers and wrist on the sprue. The sprue's getting smaller and smaller in each bit, so... This bit of Benson pro tip for you there, just keep trimming it down, probably trim it all down at the beginning to give you maximum access to all of the, the figure. So that was the base coating finished and it's on to the shading. It's going to be using Agrex Earthshade on all of the model except for his jacket and trousers so that um, Steel Legion drab don't darken that up. But the rest, add a little bit of shade to Agrex Earthshade. Uh, he's doing it on his skin, the green and the black. And then just to prove me wrong, a little bit on the on the jacket, but it's where his belt is. It's the same colour, but we just wanted it a little bit darker, stand out a little bit more from the rest of his uniform. Castellan Green's back out now. So this is the same green that we did the base colour in. And this is to start the highlight, bringing back up that colour of, of the green. So his bulletproof vest, helmet and ankle pads. And just painted back in anywhere the shade didn't well did settle and we didn't want it to so this flat surface there's raised bits just leave the shade in all of the recesses paint back in the bulk of this base color giving you a nice blend highlight there still using the base brush here so it's pretty quick doesn't take too long to do this top up of the base color so benson added a little highland springs here this was just a little comedy notification i noticed to let me know he's watered this down a lot so this is castellan green about 50 percent mixed with strachan green about 50% and then fairly watery. I don't know how watery means, I'd guess about 50% water and 50% of the paint mixture by the end to give it a nice runny, easy blend effect here. So it's quite translucent by the end, very thin, so you can see the colours underneath building up on that layer. So you're going to be applying this this coat to the, the edges, uh, quite a thick line though, but to all the edges of these, the Green Army issue soldier equipment there. So thick line there'll be another highlight to highlight up the very very edges don't forget to do the bits that you've left on the sprue so that's the sort of shoulder pad of that 
uh, bulletproof vest and then it's uh, the the body of the gun that you can't quite see there because Benson's got no idea where the camera is but once he's got it back on camera for you there you can see just highlighting up the edges um, still using the base brush and quite a, a generous line along the edge so this is only the second layer of highlights there'll be a third that we're going to add to uh, the, the middle of this highlight just to sort of blend those colors so once again the spring water's back just making sure I know this is again watered down this is just neat Strachan green and it's going to be applied a thinner layer on top of everywhere you just added that 50-50% blend and so the effect of the water here is that it's quite a thin translucent layer so putting this on top of the previous ones is just going to build up that Strachan green to allow it to blend uh, more easily and give a much more realistic look to the model by the by the end the free the free highlights will have blended nicely together so this is one of the the longest parts of a painting this model there's quite a lot of green and quite a lot of very delicate intricate highlighting to do here to give it the most realistic look and feel by the end um, this model does take quite a long time overall and what's worrying to me is these these guys that what I do know about them is they are pretty much cannon fodder and you are going to need to a lot of them in your army to stand any chance of winning a, a, a battle so uh, I feel like you've got to paint a lot of these and they take a long time so that must be hard work for you game workshop boys out there and girls and girls as well uh, so he's just painting the back of the gun as well can you even see the back of the gun when this model's all glued together I wonder we'll see by the end but it's important it's attention to detail and you know this is your easiest chance to do it while it's not attached you can now see it's not no longer attached to the sprue so uh, Benson's been removing the sprue as he's gone through making it easier and easier to reach those bits or he just snapped it off place your bets now as to what happened Cadian flesh tones back out this is a highlight back up the skin after that wash was added so he's just mainly painting back in that base coat in all the the raised parts of the hand and his face just leaving the shade in the recesses so that's really between the fingers uh, between the parts of your palm and then the, the deeper parts of your face so highlight up there the sort of nose chin cheekbones the usual uh, as I do in most of my videos it's fairly standard highlighting his left flesh is out just neat and this is going to be to add a, an extra highlight to all those raised parts as per mentioned or previously mentioned and Agnes just quickly checking there and this is just a smaller highlight on the very tips of all of those raised bits so it's the sort of fingertips knuckles um, the, the your sort of thumb bit that wraps around the gun you know the where the light would be hitting most a bad and blacks out next this is going to be to start painting in the soldier's eyes so he can see exactly where he's shooting so he starts Benson often starts with a a thick thick circle in the eye socket and then he paints in the eyeballs on top of that so it gives it a nice black outline makes his eyes really pop out here and then just whipping back out the abaddon black once more this is using the insane detail or the psycho brush i can't quite tell without seeing the name um, that's by the army painter this brush and that's just to paint in two tiny tiny little pupils really give this guy some great looking eyes which you can see there he's just letting you see to the camera get to have him taking a little bow lead belch is back out now that's the silver by uh, citadel and this is just to start highlighting back up all the, the metallics on this so that's the bayonet there the knife's handle the muzzle of the gun the scope of the gun and the stop of the gun and the ammo of the gun and maybe the handle of the gun apologies i did mean the sight not the scope of the gun so nobody nobody correct me there it was also an emblem on the gun there and then we're on to the actual soldier again and we're going to be using mithril silver and this is the lighter of the citadel silvers just to add that final highlight and this is going to be on the emblems on the soldier the emblem on the gun all the places i mentioned before which are metallic and you just really want to add, add a much smaller amount along the very edges of each piece of that metallic just to really make it pop on the the edges and the corners Abaddon black 80% and white scar 20% Benson here is just mixing his own grey I don't know why he does that and he's just highlighting up the Abaddon black there with, with that colour next next he's going to notice he's missed the tags on the greaves of the soldier uh, so he's just painting them with Carrick stone he's then going to uh, wash it with seraphin sepia I think Agric's earth shed would be perfectly acceptable there if you've got that to hand Carrick stones out again just to add the highlights to those tags so just catching all of the edges with just a little bit of bringing back in that original color there making the tag stand out a little bit better he's going to be moving on to highlighting the soldiers um, 
jacket and trousers. This is with Talon Sand. So a different colour to the original base coat. This is going straight up for lighter and that's because he didn't add any shade to this part so we can move into highlighting it with a different colour. So he's going to be painting on the majority of the jacket and trousers in full again. Really just trying to leave that steel legion drab in all the recesses where the shade would normally be left. He's just leaving the base colour in the, the recesses there and that just gives a well, it gives you a nice example here of a different way of, of sort of highlighting and shading with a model. Uh, Benton often chooses this where he doesn't use shade at all and he just highlights up and up and up from the base colour. Whereas I like to use the, the shade method because I find it quicker and more convenient for the number of models that I'm painting. And also because I, I do find it easier to use the, the, the shader as I'm quite new to the hobby and uh, I'm still learning and improving on my highlighting techniques and skills so that shade really helps me out there while I've got a lot of other things to be concentrating on learning at the same time. So Benson's still painting the arms separately here. Uh, it's allowing him to reach all the parts of the model you'll never be able to see but at least it does give some attention to detail and I don't, I don't know about yourselves but I often get quite annoyed with the bits that you, you can't reach even though I know I can barely see them let alone anybody else inspecting my model will never see them but it does upset me inside, it crushes my soul. Talon Sand 75% and Ushabti Bone here 25% mix those two together and you get this slightly off Talon Sand colour. This is going to be used to do the next highlight of of his trousers and jackets and this is just applying building up that that first highlight of just talon sand and this is you're aiming for all the more raised parts so thinner lines on top of where you've just previously painted so you're really going for the outsides of all the folds in, and creases in his clothes along with the the angles on the bottom of his jacket make sure you get the rim of his jacket all the edges of his pocket his little camo uh, combat pockets there uh, the folds along the front after that uh, highlight is complete. You want to do 50% Talon Sand and 50% Ushabti Bone. This is just for a stronger highlight and you're going to be doing all the same areas you've just done, uh, a thinner line and on, on the more prominent raised edges, just making it catch where, where the light would be hitting most on all of those parts, just really blending that colour, that highlight up in this model. So Benson did leave me a little note after this this highlight's complete. He doesn't do a 25% Talon Sand, 75% New Shabti Bone, and he does think that would have been the next highlight he should have done. He should have done an even thinner line of that, but instead he does move on straight to neat New Shabti Bone. And in, in his opinion, I, I don't see it myself. I, I do enjoy when a highlight really pops by the end, but um, he thinks it's just missing a step to make this blend perfectly in, in his eyes. I mean, let us know in the comments below what you think there if you if you would have done an extra step. And that's the model completely finished. As I, as I said, this was quite a long model. Benson does take a little more time over his models. Time and care, he's a bit older than me and frail. So, an hour and 50 minutes, still not bad, pretty quick. And I think that looks fantastic, I really like that. He, that's not including the base time, as you can see, he has used, he's used Agril and Earth there, which if you want to see in uh, on my channel, you can look at any of the Arcadia Quest models. I show that being used there. He's also added a little bit of that tufty grass there, which you can buy from most hobby shops and you just glue it on. So it does add a lot to the models. It looks quite nice. And then the, I'm just showing another one of the models. As I said, he's got a lot of these to paint. And this one's got some little decals on pretty impressive i quite like how they look so this is our first games workshop our first 40k video let us know in the comments below what you thought if you would like to see more on this channel we'll probably mainly be sticking to to board games but as this is benson's number one hobby it was nice to let him paint what he loves so don't forget if you did enjoy the video do big up benson below and give him a thumbs up thank you all very much for watching